injured and is out for the rest of the game. With a wrist injury, a swing pass to Hunt. And on the sideline, Hunt gets inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 15. He'll bring up third down and a long six. Verizon red zone. One trip and a 25-yard field goal. Remember that touchdown that they scored was on a 59-yard run by Joe Hill. Third and seven. Lots of time. Harrison, corner, broke it up and incomplete. DeAndre Elliott on the coverage, but certainly a, a great field goal range for Nick Diaz. He tried to thread it in there, but but pay attention to the coverage right there for Elliott. Almost, I mean, really should have had a pick right there. Got one interception on the season, three pass breakups. He was in excellent position, turned and located the football. I think that's what he probably should have had. Diaz has had a very good year, six of eight on the season. One of one tonight. 32 yards on this one. And he knocks it through. How about Utah State? They've lost Daryl Garrison, but now they've got the lead. 13-10. Utah State head coach Matt Wells played quarterback for Utah State, was an offensive coordinator before he was a head coach. He's running out of quarterbacks right now. Craig Harrison is in for the injured Daryl Garrison, who's playing for the injured Chucky Keaton. And Harrison got an earful when he came off the sideline. <laughs> yeah, for good reason. He almost gave away a scoring opportunity because he threw that ball to DeAndre Elliott, the cornerback, who almost had an interception and took points off the board. But Wells didn't want to bury his quarterback. He didn't want to bury Harrison. He found him later on the bench. Call that a teachable moment, Rich. Well, this is—I mean, this really is amazing. There's a look at Garrettson. The wrist is in a—looks like a soft cast and a sling. But the defense of Utah State has kept them in this ball game, and now the Aggies have a three-point lead. Deontay Gaines across the 30. A good return by Gaines. Let's look at this Utah State defense. Well, Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, has to be very frustrated right now because they can't protect Garrett Grayson in the front seven. They can't run the ball. They're having a hard time holding up on the inside. They're getting pressure from the outside, whether it's from that defensive line and B.J. Larson and Jordan Nielsen, or if it's linebackers like Nick Vigil or Zach Vigil. Seven sacks so far today for a defense that came in here with 17 sacks tied second in the Mountain West. And as we talked about, Colorado State had given up just nine sacks in the entire Ball season. Start. Offense, number 30, five yard penalty, first down. And right. <laughs> Right now, it, it looks like Colorado State is the team that is playing without their, their starter. It's really amazing. How many times have we seen here tonight first and long, first and 15, first and 25? reset the game clock. 14 minutes, 14 seconds. But really, with their inability to run the ball against this front seven and their inability to protect Garrett Grayson and not allow him to set up in the pocket and found his, find his wide receivers, I'm not sure what Dave Baldwin can call right now. We'll keep it on the ground. Gerald's. Well, against the run this year, first in the Mountain West, 13th in the nation is Utah State. And you talk about that, that front seven. The linebackers are the playmakers. That front three have been stout tonight as well. Well, here's the thing, but the Rams knew this, but they're the number one passing offense here in the Mountain West, and you would have thought coming into this game that maybe there would be some matchups to exploit in that secondary, but Grayson has no time. Grayson on a quick out. That's the man they've got to get the ball to a little more often here with Shard Higgins. Well, nice three-step timing right, the time timing route 
And you see Grayson gets the ball as soon as his back foot gets to the top of his drop. Good speed out by Higgins. Good timing, good accuracy. And now you're in third and one. Higgins over 100 yards now. Grayson has broken Kelly Stoffer's career record for yardage. And will add to it, Stephen Walker with the catch. And enough for the first down. It's a five-yard pickup. Zach Vigil with the stop. Kelly Stoffer had some big years here in Fort Collins. Grayson, the senior, making his 29th start. A summer spent at the Manning Academy. He has really, really propelled this quarterback into the spotlight in the Mountain West and drawing attention from the next level. Higgins breaks it. Higgins still on his feet inside the 35. Very nicely done. Pressure off of of Grayson's left side. He identifies the blitz. Look at the block by this inside receiver, Joe Hansley. Just enough to let give Higgins some wiggle room, and he explodes upfield. 19 yards on the catch and run. And Colorado State is moving it. Remember, they've got deep distance from their field goal kicker. Jared Roberts has hit a 52-yarder already tonight. Jared. He slams it inside the 30. And the Rams are starting to find some running room. Well, you see, Rich, in this second half, it, it hasn't been big gainers, but they've had some nice tough runs inside that have set them up in second medium, second short situations. So it doesn't look like much, but being able to get that three to five or six yards on first down against this front sets your offense in a very good situation, a situation they haven't seen much of tonight being second and four. And they're well within Roberts' field goal range now. Gerald's is caught and trips. Jalen Davis, the freshman, is not playing like one. Talk about a kid who has a very bright future, is one of the top playmakers. He's gonna come off of the edge on the left side of your screen, number 13. Second time we've seen him on a cornerback blitz make a play in the backfield tonight. We haven't called his number much in coverage because they haven't attacked him, but he's been active. Third and five. Drive has reached the Utah State 30. Center screen and almost a disaster. Walker, the intended receiver. And so out comes Jared Roberts, who hit a 52-yarder in the first half. Is 35 of 42 in his career in field goals. This one from 47. And he's, he's had a few uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic misses here in the last three games. missed it and Utah State hangs on to a three-point lead Jim McElwain right now pacing Aggies on the road and up by three 13-10 Utah State, without their quarterback, Daryl Garrison, has a 13-10 lead on the road against Colorado State with 10.42 left in the ballgame. The Chick-fil-A fan cam. Homecoming. It's the first sellout in 10 years here at Fort Collins. Of course, Colorado State, a 5-1 start. A lot of momentum, especially in their last two wins. And you can say the same about Utah State, who took down a top 20 BYU team and wiped out Air Force last week. Daryl Garrison is out for the night, a right wrist injury. Craig Harrison is running the team, the senior, who did get a start last year and has seen relief duty throughout his career.
Jawan Hunt with that run. There's a look at Garrettson. Now remember, he was playing for the injured Chucky e. Keaton, who suffered his second consecutive season ending injury. Second down and seven. This is Joe Hill. And Hill. Terry Jackson finishes him off. Bring up a long third down. Both, both defenses playing an inspired brand of football here tonight. You've seen a couple of you know, explosive plays here and there, but for the most part, it's been tough yardage for the offense. And another down in distance, third down and eight. But the Aggies have been absolutely terrible in so far tonight. Hunter Sharp in motion. Harrison, quick throw, big hit, incomplete. Sharp, the intended receiver, and the hit Early came. on the field is an incomplete forward pass. It's fourth down. Preston Hodges with the hit. Well, excellent recognition by number 24, Preston Hodges. You're going to see him on the right side of the screen here, trying to hit a slant to Hunter Sharp, but right there at the reception point, making contact, breaking up the pass, and forcing the Aggies to punt. Joe Hansley is deep. Jared Bentrude to punt. He's had a good night. Hansley pinballs off one and is caught from behind at the 27 yard line. Colorado State at home, nine minutes left. Down three. It's a game, 490 yards of offense, and they're getting thrown around like ragdolls by that front seven. Second and 17. Grayson inside screen flags down. Another big hit. That one delivered by Ricky Ali Ifua. Offside, defense, number five. Five yard penalty, second down. It's going to save a down for Colorado State and give them five yards. You see number five right there just getting to the neutral zone. But again, trying to set up a wide receiver, a wide receiver tunnel screen to the right side of the field, but the Aggies all over it. Getting excellent cornerback play out there by their young players. Charles Lovett is the injured Colorado State player, and he was the one in the tunnel. And he had a six foot three, 275 pounder lay a lick on him. Well, how have they done it? I mean, how's this defense stopped Colorado State? How have they sacked Garrett Grayson eight times when the Rams had given up only nine sacks all year? It's all about one on one matchups. <laughs> and right now, the front three and the four linebackers of Utah State are getting after that offensive line. And that's just, it's that simple. There's no scheme, there's no magic bullet. They're just getting whipped up front. And there's no answer right now for Colorado State's offense. Grayson, Hansley a sliding catch, but it's not a big pickup. Maybe five yards, Devin centers on the coverage. Love it on the sideline. And a long third down, third down and seven. But even on that play, Rich, there, there was a three-man rush. That's all they brought. And they didn't get pressure, but it was a three-step drop by Grayson. But he still had somebody in his face. It wasn't as clean as it should have been. That's been the story of the game today for the Aggies, is the pressure they've been able to generate on this offense. Colorado State, their own 30. Third down seven, Grayson time over the middle. Caught there, Higgins slides in with the first down, the 42 yard line. Hollywood is his nickname. And Hollywood is having a nice night tonight, 12 yards on that one. Well, an excellent job by Grayson. The snap was a little bit to his left and he had to reach down, tried to corral this snap, understanding that there's gonna be pressure by that Aggie defense, but Higgins across the middle, loses his man in coverage, 
And Grayson gives him a chance to run after the catch, picks up the first down. Eight catches, 135 yards for Higgins. Charles. Now, Gerald's had a nice series last possession, and he slams forward for a gain of five. Again, there's a lot of white jerseys in the interior of that defense. There's not many open holes, and so for these running backs, it's one of those things where you've got to make up your choice, you've got to make the cut, put your head down, keep the legs going, try and get in these second and five situations. On second and five. Another screen right side again. Higgins dashes for the stick, flies out of bounds. Nitton Vigil escorts him, and another first down for Colorado State. And all of a sudden, Higgins is back to being the featured weapon. Well, they're giving him an opportunity to catch the ball and run in space. And great hustle out there by Nick Vigil to run from his inside linebacker, his outside linebacker position and get Higgins before he went out of bounds, but Higgins caught a very nice block on the edge by the freshman, Xavier Williams, to give him the extra yards. First and 10, Aggie show blitz. Gerald yeah. swallowed up. Jordan Nielsen in there as well as Nick Vigil. Well, Nick Vigil is just hustling. You just saw him a play earlier, run Higgins down from inside out. This last time, he comes off the left edge and chases Gerald's down all the way on that right sideline from behind. You talk about an excellent hustle play. Nick Vigil's been all over the field. Well, just across midfield, second down, 11. Colorado State with the ball, down three. Five minutes left, ball game. Another short throw and an acrobatic catch by Xavier Williams, the red shirt freshman out of San Diego. So it was an excellent catch. He's trying to run a speed out while he's going to his right or his left, and then he reaches behind, contorts his body, comes down with a catch. Excellent job. Got a big block for Higgins earlier, two plays earlier, and then comes up with a big grab to make it third and short. On third and short, Geralds has the first down, stretches inside the 35, down to the 34-yard line. Check it, it was Jason Oden, the well, junior. Steven Walker right here just, get, just gets enough from Nick Vigil coming off the edge. Orlando, Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, bringing this pressure quite a bit. But because of the block by Walker, that gives Jason Oden the chance to get upfield, pick up the first down. Flag down in the backfield. Did Utah State have too many men on the field? There's no foul for delay of game. Please reset the play clock to 25, uh, as it was not reset after the previous play. Well, the game clock sits at 4.03. And as you see, Matt Wells, the head coach of Utah State, he's without his starting quarterback, Daryl Garretts. And somehow, though, with his defense and his field goal kicker, he's got a three-point lead. Under four minutes left. Geralds. Down to the 32-yard line. Clock continues to run. Travis Seafelt made the stop. Nice job at the point of attack by Seatfield, but again, they're bringing that pressure off of the left side with Nick Vigil, and he's chasing everything down from behind. This is a great opportunity to try and throw a bootleg pass, try and get Vigil crashing inside, and get Grayson to break containment. Second down, eight. Blitz again. Quick release. Hansley to the 30. It'll bring up another third down. Jared Roberts has deep range for Colorado State. He's got range, Rich, but yeah, not, not accuracy tonight. Uh, he's been a very good kicker, but you, you never know. And I'm sure that 
Well, Jim McElwain wants to be able to bleed this clock down, get closer to the end zone. You want six points. You don't want to tie this thing. Third and five. Here come the Aggies again. Odin, and he's nowhere near the first down. To the 29. Well, Roberts boomed one from 52, but then he missed one that could have tied the ball game. So with two minutes left, he's got another shot to tie it. And this from 46. Timeout. Is going to call a timeout. Utah State, a 30 second timeout. Colorado State has all three of their timeouts. Utah State just burned one, they've got two left. Jim McElwain, if you were to tell Jim McElwain that coming out in the second half, you would not have to face Daryl Garrison. And you'd be at home in front of a sellout crowd with the offense that he's seen his team have in, in six games. I think he'd like his chances. Yeah, but he has to face B.J. Larson and Jordan Nielsen and Zach Vigil and Nick Vigil and that front seven that had just harassed his offensive line the entire night. It's been one of the more dominant performances I've seen from a defense in the Mountain West here in the last couple of seasons. But what the Aggies have been able to do to, you know, really the hottest offense in the Mountain West in the last three or four games. Hansley, a wide receiver, is the holder. Remember that wild uh, Statue of Liberty play that uh, sent a game into overtime, the bowl game against Washington State. From 46 to tie it with two minutes left. Got into it. And he got it. It's tied. Jared Roberts. Less than two minutes. Homecoming. And a tie game. 13 apiece. Colorado State. Utah State. In the Mountain West. College football on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Icy Hot Smart Relief Tens Therapy. By Verizon. Get NFL Mobile included with the More Everything plan, exclusively from Verizon. And by Sonic's new boneless chicken wings. Old Town, downtown Fort Collins. Up the street, a sellout crowd, and a tie game with a minute 50 left. Brian Sweet is deep, along with Hunter Sharp. 13 apiece. And this is going to be Sharp. Out to the 25-yard line. And that's where Utah State will put it in play with a minute 40 left. Time for the Napa play of the game. And the Napa play of the game was early. This was Joe Hill untouched. 59 yards, and that got Utah State on the board. Adam Archuleta, how much rope do you give Craig Harrison if you're Matt Wells? I, I, I don't know if you give him too much. I, you might, depending on how these first two plays go on this drive, you might have a better chance of winning this game in overtime starting on the 25-yard line and letting your defense go out there. Harrison will throw, now step up and run to the 35, stays on his feet, gets to the 42-yard line. Daryl Garrison, who has starred this year, the sophomore quarterback, knocked out with a wrist injury. And, and Harrison, who hasn't attempted a throw, is running the team. Well, a nice job by Harrison, not trying to force it, picking it up with his feet. To the sideline, it's incomplete. It'll bring up second down and 10, Hayden Wicker. The intended receiver. I mean, the last thing you want to do right now if you're Craig Harrison is try and force it. 
and try and be the hero. And make sure the throw is there. If it's not there, take off, use your legs, you have some timeouts. Get your team in field goal position, but don't do anything to give the Rams the ball back in this situation. Second and 10 for the 41. Pump fake and a throw behind the intended receiver, Devontae Robinson. Now that incompletion stops the clock, and Colorado State has three timeouts left. Yeah, and Max Morgan almost had his second interception of the game, and that would have been a pick six, and that was a, a great example of Harrison double clutching it, throwing the ball late, almost throwing an interception. Now it's third and 10. And you mentioned that Colorado State with the timeouts, with time on the clock. And Utah State only two of 11 on third down in this ball game. You gotta keep it conservative. Some type of a wide receiver screen. Harrison Rolls looking, throwing in traffic, incomplete, and that stops the clock. Colorado State has all three timeouts. They'll get the ball back. Well, what a, what a, what a job by Marty English and Al Simmons' defense on this drive. You had two incomplete passes. Virtually very little time was milked off the clock. You were able to save three timeouts and give your team an opportunity. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jim McElwain goes after this punt. Illegal substitution by Utah State. 12 players in the formation. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Well, it's a five-yard penalty. Matt Wells has lost his quarterback. Actually, he's lost two of them. Playing without Chucky Keaton for the second straight year. Daryl Garrettson had been dynamite in relief. Knocked out of this game. Craig Harrison put his team in a position for a field goal to take the lead. The Rams of Colorado State have tied it and are about to get the ball back with a minute eight left. First sellout in 10 years in Fort Collins. And a good kick. And Hansley wants no part of this football. And that's a wise decision. 58 seconds. Three timeouts, Colorado State ball, 13 apiece. Coming up, we're headed out to San Diego State, Hawaii, and the Aztecs. That's followed by Inside College Football, presented by Dodge. It's after the game, only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jamie Erdahl, standing by in San Diego. Boy, Rich, 88 yards. What is that? 88 yards in 58 seconds against this defense is a long way to go for Garrett Grayson. Yeah, I, I guess I should ask you, <laughs> how much rope do they give Garrett Grayson here? I think he's earned it. Yeah, I think he's he's certainly earned the green light to go out there and try and win this game. But, boy, it's not going to be easy going up against that front seven. You haven't had much success so far here tonight. He's been sacked eight times. D. Hart on the carry, and it looks like Colorado State is thinking overtime. Well, certainly there, there doesn't seem, seem to be much of a sense of urgency right here. Todd Orlando, defensive coordinator of Utah State, has had a marvelous night. Second and seven again. Hart breaks loose to the 30. Clock stops with a first down, but there's only 19 seconds left here in regulation. Timeout, Colorado State, their first of the half. 30-second timeout. See, I'm not really sh I don't know what, what... You call a timeout now, but you don't call the timeout before when you just seem like you're content with letting time run off the clock. I, I think that, you know, you got a guy like Garrett Grayson and Rashard Higgins. I know it's been tough for their offense so far tonight going up against his defense, but I still, I think, in, in a conservative manner, you, you still, with all these timeouts, you know, you have a chance to go down the field. Throw it out there to Higgins a couple times. You've seen his ability to, to run after the catch in, in, in some short passes, but 
I'm not sure what taking a timeout right there really does for your team. You already let about 35 seconds come off the clock. I guess the fear would be early in that drive, if you do throw it and it's incomplete, Utah State still has two timeouts, and they might get the ball back and, and get themselves into field goal range. It's a real cat and mouse game between Jim McElwain and Matt Wells right now. But, but at least hustle up to the line of scrimmage oh, and yeah. run a play, you know, and don't don't let the clock bleed out if you're going to call a timeout here after you pick up the first down. Well, let's, let's see what they dial up here on first and 10 from the 32. Grayson will throw it, and he'll go deep for Higgins. Higgins, a sliding catch at the 22. 11 seconds left. They go deep, and they hit it. Timeout, Colorado State. second and a half, a 30 second timeout. Well, there it is, three deep coverage. Frankie Satera, the free safety, not able to get over there in time and help out his cornerback, Jalen Davis. Grayson throws the ball up. Higgins able to beat the one-on-one -on -one matchup, slide under that ball, and get their football team in field position. 46 yards, field goal range. 11 seconds and a timeout left. Do you center the ball now for your kicker? Absolutely. Unless you know and you guys, unless he likes being on that left hash mark, surely the next play is going to be D. Hart or whoever's in there running back, running the ball right between the hash marks. And that's exactly what Colorado State does. Grayson takes a knee, got it between the hash marks. They're going to wind the clock. And now he'll stop it with three seconds left. Mountain Division, remember Utah State. Timeout, Colorado State, their final timeout. Please reset the game clock to, thir to three seconds. This is a 30 second timeout. Utah State won the Mountain last year. Colorado State trying to get to two and one. Boise State got to three and one with a win last night over Fresno State. And this is all coming down to the right foot of Jared Roberts, who is two of three tonight, and in his career is 36 of 44. Well, and Rich, to your point, talking about the Mountain West, this is from Jim McElwee. If you want to win the Mountain West, you've got to be Boise State and Utah State on a regular basis. Now, they lost to Boise State earlier. The game Utah clock State. operator, please reset the game clock to four seconds. Four seconds on the game clock, please. Utah State is a team is, that you, you have to beat if you have designs on being the best team in the Mountain West. For the win in regulation. And as expected, Utah State. Timeout. Utah State. That was their second and a half. It's a 30 second timeout will make Jared Roberts think about it. Three opportunities for Jared Roberts tonight. These are the two that he hit. That was from 52. And the next, he just nursed through from 46. He missed from 47. This will be from 41, and it's straight on. If he makes it, the first sellout in 10 years here at Colorado State is gonna go nuts. If he misses it, it's overtime. Now how about this, Higgins, <laughs> the first play of the game, and the last play of the game, not much in between, but Incredible. Utah State will burn their last timeout. Third and final timeout. Utah State, 30 second timeout.
This is a Colorado State team that was at the bottom of the Mountain West Conference when Jim McElwain got here. And two and a half seasons later, after a bowl win over Washington State last year, the Rams are a 41 yard field goal away from going six and one with wins against Colorado and on the road against Boston College. The entire week, this city has been a buzz. Yesterday, it was on fire. Big celebration downtown. Full house tonight. First one since 2004. Now, Utah State can't stop it. Roberts from 41 for the win for the Rams. Movement, flags, and if it's a penalty, it's a runoff. And this could mean overtime. Boy, it might have it might have been Sam Carlson. Ball start offense. Oh, number wow. 76. Five yard penalty. Second out. Clock will start on the snap. Now Utah State is celebrating like they've got to overtime. The Utah State bench is saying that the clock should be run. The officials say it starts on the snap. And there's a heated argument going on. Whoa. Utah State celebrated. They ran to the sideline. It's not a run out because the clock was dead at four seconds. If it was running and the penalty happened, then it's a run out. <laughs> so Utah State comes back on the field and Roberts lines back up. Now a 46 yarder. Snap, kick, it's long enough and good. A six and one start. The best start for Colorado State since 2000. An incredible defensive effort by Utah State. But in the end, the right leg of Jared Roberts. And a 16-13 win for Colorado State. And Colorado State, believe me, escapes with a three-point win. Utah State playing without Daryl Gerritsen, their quarterback. Plenty of leg. And right down the middle. Let's go down to Cassie Gallo. Cassie. Well, Coach, are you done holding your breath? Yeah, you know, what a, what a great deal for the fans. And, uh, you know, we didn't play great. And yet our guys are finding a way to win. And, and uh, I'm proud of them. And it's on homecoming in front of a sellout crowd. What does this win mean for your program? We're getting better. Um, we got a long ways to go, but uh, you know what? For all those frustrated Ram fans out there, and uh, it's been a while, and uh, I'm just really proud of these guys and the organization and how hard they've worked and what they've done to, you know, move forward and not allow anything but excellence in everything they do. And what about this moment is so emotional? 
Well, I don't know. We won a game. We got to get ready to play one next week, and uh, we'll enjoy this for a little bit. But uh, you know what? It's pretty cool. Certainly, go enjoy it, Coach. Thank you. Well, wow, it's, it's good stuff. And the nuance of the rule, Adam Archuleta, because they stopped it with a timeout, there was no run out. Utah State celebrated like they had been able to get the game to overtime. It was it was one heck of a finish. You just think three plays before, it looked as if they were going to play for overtime. It was a little pop run by D. Hart that maybe gave them, you know, second thoughts about maybe attacking downfield. And then it was Rashard Higgins. The very first play and the very last play of the game coming coming through huge with explosive pass play. Well, Utah State has lost the game and they've lost their quarterback as well, Daryl Garretson, with a wrist injury. And there are the standings. Colorado State now at two and one. Now their one loss was on the road to Boise State, but there's a lot of football left in the Mountain West Conference. First sellout in 10 years. And the turnaround continues for the Rams. It was a big win. And I think, you know, he kind of said it best. When you don't play your A game and you still be able to go out there and win against one of the powers in the Mountain West, you'll take that any day of the week. For Adam Archuleta, Cassie Gallo, our entire crew, I'm Rich Waltz. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Let's send it back to New York here at homecoming. 16-13, Colorado State beats Utah State. Back to New York, Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Christian Fourier.